Now, security is fundamental in all of this. One of the reasons we go to war is that we fear for our security, or our security has been undermined. And if we're involved in killing each other, we need some kind of agreement to stop the fighting, but there are many, many fears and risks. If I put down my arms, for example, will you attack me? Am I making myself vulnerable to attack by virtue of an agreement to engage in a ceasefire? Mm. What assurance do I have that you, my enemy, who I trust not at all, mm. will respect our, cease, our ceasefire agreements? Mm. I don't. I want to keep a gun behind my back and another under the bed, even if I'm putting one on the table for decommissioning, because I don't trust you. Mm. And I don't trust you for good cause. And you don't trust me. So we have this mutual problem here. And therefore the mediators and international actors that support the mediators when they're designing the security components of a peace agreement, above all, have to pay attention to building confidence between the parties in the process of negotiations and in the content of the agreement. So we have to find ways to mitigate the risk and thereby mitigate the fears. So if we're going to have a ceasefire or cessation of hostilities and you're asking us, the rebels, to step back, to be confined to a particular area, we want some guarantee that you, the government, are not going to bomb us from the air. Why would we go into one confined area mm. with our weapons if this is a risk? Mm. Now, there are many ways in which to mitigate the risk. The ways that we choose for this problem will be different from that conflict and the other. But we can learn from a variety of conflicts. One of the things that's common from, from historical experience is the need for a third party often the United Nations, or in Africa, the African Union, that provides the role of third-party reassurer, monitoring, adherence to a ceasefire, verifying adherence to the different phases of a ceasefire, investigating allegations that one or another party has violated the ceasefire and then dealing with that, yeah. playing a mediating role or an adjudicating role, mm -hmm. So, if I think that you have violated the ceasefire, what are my options? To go after the attack, reprisal, or preferably to refer the matter to a neutral, trusted third party who will investigate the matter and either mediate or adjudicate. Mm. I feel less need, less incentive then to go into the attack. Mm. So, crises can be either averted or at least contained through that third party role typically a role played by the United Nations. Mm. We may, in our ceasefire agreement, say that they're going to be demilitarized zones that are buffer zones. The further we are apart from each other, the less the risk of a surprise attack. Mm. Now, how far we need to be apart from each other depends on what kind of weapons we have. If we have light weapons, it's a smaller distance. If we have long-range weapons, it's a further distance. Mm. So buffer zones, demilitarized zones may be an option and you want some kind of United Nations or African Union or international troop presence that helps my confidence that you're not going to wander through this zone mm. with your weapons and vice versa. We may even say in our ceasefire agreement that the big weapons are going to be put under lock and key mm. under United Nations supervision. But the details here, which are all important in any particular case, will necessarily, necessarily differ from one case to the other. Mm -hmm. The overarching general theme is you have to build in confidence, mm -hmm. mitigating, minimizing risk, and thereby minimizing fears.